Greetings, Penny Enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma. This is Teagaw 3D. Today's episode I'm going to call Sucking at Something is the first step at being kind of good at something. Colon, the Les Paul slash guitar story. AKA, Vicki gets a little bit better at painting. So here's the deal. I had a custom order request to come in. A gentleman has a collection of Transformer action figures and he's made them into a rock band. Unfortunately, his lead guitarist didn't have a guitar that really fit him. So this gentleman was looking for a 3D printed guitar to fit his Transformer figurine. Not only that, he wanted a specific guitar. He wanted the, the Slash Les Paul Gibson guitar. This is a good little illustration of the kind of orders you might get with 3D printing, the kind of niche that 3D printing will fill. Uh, this guy found uh, replicas of what he wanted on eBay, but they weren't the right size for his transformer. And a company, a mass production company, is not necessarily going to run a line of guitars for transformer rock bands. And so that's where 3D printing comes in. So here, it's a small guitar. The material cost, the printing time, that's not going to be the big kicker. Uh, the big kicker was the modeling time and you just explained that and the gentleman was understanding and to him it was worth the investment. Modeling, I was in my comfort zone there. I was working in Blender. With Blender you can put in a background image um, so you can use a reference image to work against. Here I pulled in an image of the Les Paul Slash guitar and what I started off with was using what's called Bezier Curves to outline the body and the head of the guitar. Me and the gentleman were working remotely so we did a lot of discussion through pictures and emails and text messages. Um, I didn't have a firm measurement on the size that I wanted for the guitar. So for me, I decided, well, once I had that general base of the guitar done, I did a very quick, uh, low resolution print and I mailed it to him just so he could check the sizing. And the reason I did that was the size of the object was going to dictate how I attacked some of the details, particularly how I attacked the strings of the guitar. And here's the reason. You know, like when you're printing on your 3D printer, you may have noticed sometimes you slice and the details disappear. Uh, details that are smaller than the extrusion width, the printer will skip. If I were gonna make strings that were smaller than the extrusion width that I was working with, they wouldn't show up. Knowing the size of that final guitar was going to influence how I was going to attack those strings. So in this case, you know, I mailed him, he sized it up on his transformer figurine and we had a discussion and decided to cut off a little bit of, you know, to size it down a little bit. The details themselves were pretty straightforward, um, a lot of cylinders, a lot of just little elongated cubes. The strings themselves were just rectangles that were point three five of a millimeter wide, um, nice long and thin. And um, I guess the only trick here is the tuning keys. Uh, they look like they're at random angles, but they're not. They're at angles that I knew my printer would be able to do the overhangs on. So, yeah, thinking ahead. Printing, I printed it on my Maker Gear M2. Uh, did uh, 0.10 millimeter layers. Um, I did experiment in with doing the 0.05 milliliter layers when I got to the details, um, but I think just 0.10 would, be, would have been sufficient. And here's where I had to get out of my comfort zone. The painting, like a uh, white guitar. It doesn't look like the trademark Les Paul slash guitar. Um, I'm not a Michael Phelps. I'm not an A Pyro Designs. I'm Vicky Soma, and I'm not very good at painting. And I knew that coming in. Um, but this is a small project. It was a good opportunity for me to jump out of my comfort zone and learn because I can mess up and just reprint one with just, you know, like 30 minutes of time. So here's what I did I suck at painting, so I got help. 
I talked to a friend of mine from high school who was really good at painting. And then I also picked up a phone and I called the local comic book shop and I asked, do you have someone there who is good at painting miniatures? And they're like, you sure do. And they gave me a phone number of a gentleman who called me and he and his son met me and we talked about this project. I had absolutely full of tensions of outsourcing my painting to those men. Um, and they were very reasonably priced. I could have done that. So if painting is not something that you want to do, call your local comic book shop. There's probably some people out there, some artists out there who will help you out. All that said, talking to them outside the Mexican restaurant holding my baggie of 3D prints, I got inspired. And I thought about the struggles of learning 3D printing. I thought about the struggles of learning 3D modeling. And maybe painting was just the same. Maybe I just had to pay my dues. Maybe I just had to practice and work at it to get better at it. But Vicky, you may ask, don't you have a four-year-old and a two-year-old? Isn't it kind of hard to paint with a four-year-old and a two-year-old clinging to you? And to that, I would say yes. And I would also say, that's what failed prints are for, my friends. You just grab, go to your little trash can of, go to your trash can of failed prints and wraps and pull a few select things out. Give them to the two-year-old, give them to the four-year-old, give them some paints, and they're happy. So I went home and I had painting parties. And those first few attempts were sort of still, uh, left a little to be desired, um, but I figured maybe I needed some more practice and also needed investment in better materials. I bought a miniature painting kit, which is geared towards miniatures. I bought a whole slew of little miniature uh, paintbrushes, which were significantly smaller than the crappy paintbrush I was trying to use, the one that just was a hand-me-down that I found in my craft supplies. and. I bought a magnifying glass and the magnifying glass really made a big difference to me because that allowed me to zoom in like I used to with 3D modeling but zoom in and see what I was doing. So yeah, this is a, a failure there. Lo and behold, on that try with the miniature paints and the miniature paintbrushes and the magnifying glass, I actually came up with something that I felt comfortable um, texting the client and he loved it. And so I got it, uh, I sprayed it with a nice little acrylic sealant to make it shiny. I packaged it up, I mailed it to him. It fit his transformer and now his transformer band is complete. Happy client. And I got a little bit more confidence in my painting. I'm not gonna say I'm good at painting. I'm just gonna say I'm a little bit better at painting. Well, that's today's episode. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this will inspire you to tackle something that you suck at so you can get kind of good at it. Uh, I will be doing a blog post with a little more detail on my modeling in Blender. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to reach out to me. You can contact me on, at TGAW on Twitter. You can comment here down below on YouTube. And my blog is at www.tgaw.com. Thank you guys and have a great day.